silly. Hey guys, it's Mark and Tanya. Welcome back to our channel. So today we're going to be starting on the electrical system and the first thing we have to do is run a ground wire. So stick around, we'll show you the tools we use, why we did it, and how we did it. So by now you've probably already watched a bunch of other videos on how to do a ground connection and ground your electrical system, but you might be wondering what it's used for and why we need it in the first place. So we're going to take a little time and talk about why you need it. Do you know why you need it? Uh, no, but I'm sure you're going to tell us how. All right, we're all going to learn at the same time. So there's two fundamental things that we need to know about electricity. The first one is that electricity is always trying to get back to its source. It's trying to get back to where it came from. The second piece of information that you need to know is that it's always going to find the easiest path to get there. It's like an Italian kid in his mother's house. Haha, mm. uh. ha. but a bunch. But a bunch. All right. So uh, it's, always gonna, it's always trying to get back to its source and it's always gonna find the easiest path to get there. So under normal operation, this is fine, right? So electricity comes into this mixer through one of these prongs, it turns the mixer's motor, and then what's left over comes back and goes back to the transformer, and the electric company ch sees the difference in the two and charges us for it. So normally this is totally fine, right? Let's assume that, that some wire that has electricity in it has come loose from whatever's holding it, and now it's resting against the inside of this mixer. Now this whole thing is metal, so it conducts electricity very well. So at that point, there is electricity sitting on the outside of this. Now if I come along and I touch this and I happen to complete the circuit, I'm gonna get a pretty good shock from this. So the company that makes this is pretty smart and they say, you know, we don't want this to happen. We want to protect the guy who's using it. So we're going to create what's called a ground circuit. Now this is a way to say, rather than have electricity find its way back to its source, we're going to give it a really easy path to its source. We're going to give it a way that's much easier than passing through a body, that's much easier than passing through some random electrical system in a house. We're going to give it a direct path. So that's what this third little uh, prong is here. This is a ground wire. So this basically connects the chassis back to the neutral circuit and sends it all back there. So basically what it does, it's a way to protect you from touching this and getting a shock from it. So for the next example, let's say lightning hits your house. We've heard of this happening before. Now lightning, I know you think comes from the sky and goes down. It actually comes from the ground and goes up, but it's there's actually both kinds, but what we see with our eyes is typically from the ground up. It just happens so fast that we don't know it. So let's say the lightning on its way out of the ground hits your house. Now there's this electricity in your house trying to find its way back to the earth. So what it can do is it can find a path through one of your electrical circuits in your house, through your big screen TV and your high-end electronics, or again, the builders of the house are smart enough to say, we want to give it a path so that if something happens, it's got a direct path to the earth and it avoids the electrical system of the house. And if you look close, we've got these wires sticking out of the house here. Now these wires go to a metal bar that is buried deep into the earth, about six, six or eight feet. And the whole idea is if there's any free electricity in the house, rather than shock somebody, or mess up your electronics, it's gonna take this path and then go right back down to the earth. Okay, so we looked at two examples of why you would use a ground wire and what that system is used for. Does it make sense? Make a little totally. sense? Yes. Why, do you, why do we need it? So we don't get electrocuted. Yes, and not getting electrocuted is a good thing. So if you go outside now and look at your car, what you're gonna find is that the negative terminal of your battery is connected to the chassis of the car. So we're gonna do the same thing in the van, right? In the, in the house, like we showed you, you've got a big rod going right down into the earth. We don't have that with a van, right? We're not connected to the earth. So what we're gonna to try to do is find the next biggest mass that we have where we could dissipate some of this free electricity. And that would be the skin of the van. So just like in your car, we're gonna connect the negative terminal of our, of our house electrical system to a ground point in the van. So we've already found one last night. We cheated a little bit. We found a good ground point in the van. We drilled the hole because we've drilled a bunch of holes already. So we've got that all set. So now we're gonna to go to the van and Tanya is gonna 
create a ground circuit for us. So stay tuned on that. <laughs> So we're out here at Mark's truck underneath his hood. Wanted to show you the truck battery. So this is the negative and the positive um, terminal. So positive and negative. And the ground wire is connected to the negative terminal. That's probably why there's that little green marker. But there's a wire here and it's connected. Here's this wire connected to the uh, chassis, which I guess the Grounds the vehicle. Grounds the electrical. Grounds system. the electrical. Yes. So this is what we'll be. What I will be doing. I just learned about that just a few minutes ago. <laughs> so this is going to be really interesting. So stay tuned. <laughs> Please pray for me. Okay. So we have come over to the van, and I want to show you the spot that we've picked to run our ground wire. So in this big uh, piece of framing right here, we've gone ahead and drilled a 5 16 inch hole. And I've used some 80 grit sandpaper to take the paint off of the outside of that hole. Now we want to make sure that this is a solid connection between here and, a gr and the ground of the van, the chassis of the van. So what I've done is I have taken a wire. Now this wire runs from here to... This is going to be for our, our uh, battery to battery charger, our DC to DC charger. So this actually runs to the, the battery of the van. So I've connected the black uh, wire to the negative terminal of our van battery. And I've connected this uh, multimeter into here. I've set the meter to read resistance. So when there's no resistance between the two leads, the black and the white leads, you'll hear this. And that's really the sound we're going for. So what I've done is I've stuck the black lead into the black wire here. And I'm going to take the red lead and touch it to here. And you see we are really close. The meter right now reads 0 0.005. So that's about as close as you're going to get to a good connection. So we know we've got a good connection between this point and the ground of the van. So you want to make sure that the point you pick has a good solid connection. And now we're going to go ahead and install the wire into that spot. We've cut the wire to the length we need and Tanya is going to put the end on like we did this one already. She's also gonna heat shrink it and the whole thing. But first, the one thing I'm gonna do for her is cut some of this insulation off. Now we don't have a good tool to do this, unfortunately. I've used a razor knife, I used a couple different things. I'm gonna try with the, with the, uh, the pliers to see if I can just get the rubber off. I don't wanna cut into the wires, but I wanna just get the rubber off. So I'm gonna try to do that with this. It's not the easiest thing in the world, I will admit. We did this project yesterday at the van, but we didn't have enough lighting and I wanted to redo this uh, so that you can see a little bit better as to all the different things that uh, we, we needed to do this. So we started off with a two gauge cable, also known as the welding cable. And then on the end, this is called the cable lug. And you're gonna need a heat shrink. Um, we have the kit. It doesn't really matter what color you use. Um, I just chose this one because it fit better. And I like red, so. Um, <laughs> this is a heavy duty um, cable uh, cutter. So you need that. They make some really fancy um, cutters. Mark is just gonna use this razor blade. Then you're also gonna need a heat shrink gun. And then I like this thing, even though it's really kind of heavy duty. Um, this is a hydraulic um, crimper. And with the kit, it comes with a lot of different size teeth or jaws or whatever it's called, but I use the one that fits this cable lug. So you put the cable lug in there, and again, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So once you put that lug in there, you're going to go to the right to lock it, and then kind of, whoops. <laughs> yes, so it's hydraulic. So sit there and kind of pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it, and if you can see, is starting to close and that's going to crimp it and then once it's crimped then 
remember, lefty Lucy. And then it's gonna, you turn the gauge to the left and it'll open it up and voila, you're all done. So don't worry, Mark is gonna link all this to the at the bottom of the video so you know what we used. And that's it. So now we're actually gonna put one of these on the cable. So the first thing we've gotta do is actually strip this cable. Tani's gonna do this whole thing. The only thing I'm gonna do is strip the end of this cable. We've cut it to length with these cutters. Not the easiest thing in the world. You need a lot of uh, a lot of elbow grease to get this going, but you can cut through it. Now, there, like she said, there's a bunch of cool tools that cut this jacket specifically, but we don't have any of them. So we're gonna use a good old fashioned razor blade. Razor. And so you don't have to watch how long this takes. We're just gonna time lapse it. As you can see, Mark has cut away the rubber and has exposed the copper wires. There's a lot in there. And I'm gonna put the cable lug on it. Okay, like that. And then we're gonna crimp it. If we can get a better angle. It's not the easiest thing <laughs> to hold this. So I'll hold the cable and then you can do the hydraulic part. You can do the fun part. Okay, ready? Yep. You ready, tidy? Oh, wait, no. Okay, ready? Ready, tidy. Righty tidy, lefty Lucy. Good. Am I on there? Mm -hmm. Okay. She's doing great. <laughs> All right. One more. That's about For a good little... measure. Okay. Okay. You're good. All right. Now what? And then lefty Lucy. Lefty Lucy. Ta da! And look what we got. We have a seriously crimped cable. Okay. Nothing to pull that thing off. Okay, now, what's next? Nice and tight. Now we're gonna take the heat shrink and we're gonna place it over. There's a kid over there who got like a whistle for his birthday, so. <laughs> okay. Next, we're gonna use the heat gun and remember, ladies, this is not a Dyson or a Conair, so do not use this on your hair. <laughs> this is strictly for this type of projects, so keep that in mind. This is very hot. You wanna move the gun back, back and forth to distribute the heat. And as you can see, it's shrinking. It's looking really nice. I got a I got a nod from Mark behind the camera, so <laughs> so that's a good thing. It looks pretty good. So there you go. See, all the way around. Nicely done. There you go. We've cut this cable actually a little bit longer than we need because we may run it through here just to tidy up the wiring a bit. So it's probably gonna end up running along this edge for now and we'll put some clamps in to keep it in place and then feed it right to this chat, right to this rightmost screw on the negative bus bar. And then the batteries will also connect to that same negative bus bar. So uh, there'll be a batteries and then a shunt and it'll go to that spot. So let's get it connected and we'll be done. More flat. Let's 
so the hole wasn't big enough. <laughs> so Mark had to drill a hole with a 3 8 bit to make it. Did I need to put the washers on first? No? Okay. Now the washers, small and large. The lock washer goes last. The split washer goes last. Okay, so we're gonna do one last check now that this wire is installed. So remember, we've got our multimeter. We've got it set to ohms. That's this little symbol right here. And we've got it set to the speaker point, which means when the, there's no resistance, you get this terrible sound. So this is what the sound we're looking for. So we take the uh, black cable, the black connector, and we stick it into this cable. The other end of this cable is at the front of the van in the grounding point of the, on the uh, negative terminal of the van battery. And we're going to take this and put it here, and we're hoping for that sound. Perfect. So you can see we've got a reading of pretty much close to zero, which means there's almost no resistance between this stud and that grounding point. So we know this is a really good spot on the van. So when you do connect this together, make sure you do a test at the end and make sure you've got a good strong connection. This connection will actually get better once that end is tightened down. Right now that end is just sitting next to the stud, just sort of touching a little bit. When it's really connected well, we'll get a nice strong, even a stronger connection. But this has gone well, so this is a job well done. So before we cut out, we wanted to show you kind of what to expect on our next video and some of the next jobs we're dealing with. So Tanya showed you the beautiful wall that she colored last, that she painted last week. Now we're trying to figure out what to do with this space above the headliner, which is really complicated because it's got all these curves in it and all these angles, and it's really hard to deal with it. But last night we came here and we cut a bunch of pieces of wood from old Costco boxes. <laughs> and these are fitting up here. We've got a couple more that fill in this space. So what we're gonna do is now use these to, as a template to cut a piece of wood that's gonna sit up here. It'll have a couple access panels. And once that's in place, we'll go ahead and install this cabinet next to it. So a couple of exciting jobs going on. Always sounds like we're like in a Disney movie with these birds. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for joining us. If you like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you wanna leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. We love hearing from you guys learning from you and answering some of those questions where we can help. So, so until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.